Dear respected brothers and sisters, anyone who's been following the news recently will know that this, what has happened to the Muslims, the results of today and what's been happening over the week has been a punch to the face of the Muslims, metaphorically and literally speaking. So this brings up a very important point, brothers and sisters, something that affects every single one of us, and that is the concept of justice in Islam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentioned justice, he mentioned it with, with great emphasis. The fact that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about those who will be under the shade of Allah, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ That there will be seven people who will be under the shade of the throne of Allah on a day that there will be no, there will be no, there will be no shade. Imagine brothers and sisters, the sun will be so close and the heat will be so much that people will be drowning in their sweat. People will be sweating according to the worry and the concern and according to the deeds that they did in this life. But there will be seven people who will be under the shade of Allah. And in every single hadith that is mentioned, regarding this hadith, regarding those seven people who will be under his shade, it is the Imam Adil, the one who is a just ruler, that is mentioned every single time in the beginning. Amongst these seven are those, example is the one who is a just ruler. The one who, who was brought upon, who was brought up in Islam at a young age. One who, who went to the masjid, whose heart is attached to the masjid. One when they see their brother or their sister, uh, the meaning of which is the sister, is that when you see your brother, you say you part and you, you meet with one another and you meet with muhabba and you meet with, uh, with good intentions. The fact that when you give with your right hand that which your left hand doesn't know. The fact that when a beautiful woman from good lineage, from a good family, she, she wants to seduce you and you say, no, I fear Allah. And the seventh one is a person who is by themselves, all alone, and they are, they are crying because of the sake of Allah. These are the seven people who will be under the shade of Allah where there is no shade. But why these seven? Why are these seven people so special? Some of the scholars, they say the reason for this is because in each of these seven types of people, it is going against your own desire. Because when, in a, when a person is in a position of power, it is very easy to be corrupted. As they say, power, power corrupts. It is very easy to be a tyrant when you're in a position of power. Also, when you are young, you want to experiment, you have a whole life ahead of you. Why would you want to worship Allah? You're going against your nafs when you are doing this. And every single one of these seven, the scholars have mentioned that the pattern or the reason behind every single one of these seven people being under the shade of Allah where there is no shade is because it is so difficult to do this. But when it comes to the seven type, the, this, the first type of person that the Messenger of Allah mentions about one who is a just ruler, it is very important for us to understand, brothers and sisters, that every single one of us is different. And every single one of us have a role in this society, in this ummah. But not every single one of us should be leaders. This is so important to understand. Even if we have good intentions, if we find that we are presenting ourselves as a leader and we have certain qualities, it doesn't mean that this person should become, this, should, this person should be a leader. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people who are leaders. And even a non-Muslim, can be a just leader. Of course, this person won't be under the seven, but even a, a non-Muslim can be a just leader from a particular perspective. 
This is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was describing Najashi, describing Najashi, the Negus, before he became Muslim, he said he is Malakun Adilin. He is he, uh, Malakun Adil. He is a just ruler. <laughs> so, this issue about justice, brothers and sisters, what does it mean? Ibn al Hajar al Asqalani, rahimahullah, he said that he is a person of great authority. So, he has jurisdiction with the Muslims and he is just with them. Al Layth, rahimahullah, he gives a long list of what it means to be a just leader or a just ruler. He said it encompasses everyone that, is, that, he, uh, that he is responsible for. That he will fight oppression, that he will implement the laws of Allah and execute the book of Allah. And he will do everything to, be, do, to do things, those things which are pleasing to Allah Jalla wa Ala. But sometimes there is also an element of once you realize that there is, uh, th this is the reason why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he said that if there was one dua that was, that if I knew could be answered, then it will be the dua of the just ruler. One of the greatest forms of justice, brothers and sisters, is to be just with ourselves. And to, and to be just with the people around us. We may not be in a position of authority. We may not be in a position of authority in terms of being the leader of the country, leader of our community, leader of the, of, the, of, of the masjid or whatever the case may be. But in some respects, every single one of us has a realm of authority. And it is so important, brothers and sisters, that we are able to execute that, that position of authority in the most just of ways. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhadaa lillahi walau ala anfusikum awil walidayna wal aqrabin. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, O you who believe, uphold justice and bear witness to God, even if it is against yourselves and your parents and your close relatives. This is what justice is. Justice means that you have to even go against your group. Justice means that you have to even go against your own family. Justice means that you are able to be standing firm upon the truth wherever it may lay. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when talking about those people who enforce justice, the Muqsiteen, he said they are with Allah. And they are upon the pulpit of light, upon the, uh, upon the right of Ar-Rahman. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He has both right hands. Those who carry out justice are those who are, will, who will be, who are described in this manner by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said that if you wish, I will tell you about authority and its signs. The first is blame, the second is remorse, and the third is punishment that will occur on the Day of Judgment, except for those who were just. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said that if you are an Amir, if you are a leader over 10 people, you are responsible over 10 people, then your hands will be tied by his neck on the day of judgment. This is justice, brothers and sisters. Justice is to put something in the right place. The opposite of justice, of adl, is dhulam. And dhulam in the Arabic language means to put something out of its place. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make things easy for the Muslims all around this country and in particular the whole of the, and the whole of the world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us justice wherever we, we may live. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik shidun la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruk wa tubla. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters, there are many examples of the justice of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those who were in close contact with him, the companions. One occasion, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was lining up all of the companions in one row just before a battle. And there was one companion by the name of Sawad and he was out of the line. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this, in this time when they're just about to fight the mushrikeen, they're just about to go to war with the mushrikeen, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he pushed him back with his stick. And he says, Ya Suwad, do not step out of line. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wanted a straight line. And this is really important. 
just before going into battle. The Prophet Sallallahu the, 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 the Sawad at this time, he was a very poor individual. He didn't have an armor. He, was, he, did, he had his chest that was exposed. He didn't have any, a shirt. And he was going to battle in this manner. He said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Sallam, act with me justly. You have hurt me. Now what, is, what, what justice are you going to do? Subhanallah. Imagine if we were in this situation, brothers and sisters, what would we have done? We would have perhaps someone who is just before a really important project, just important in, for, in front of something which is really big that's going to happen. Someone comes up with a small complaint and it's not even a big complaint, a small complaint. We would maybe overlook it. Maybe we'll tell the person, you know, come on, you know, this is such a small thing. What's wrong with you? But how does a messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how does he react to this situation? Just before battle, he is about, he, he is just being, being, being told off by one of his companions because he thought that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had acted with him with injustice. The messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, here is the stick. You hit me back. I hit you with my stick. You hit me back. And then, the, then Sawad, he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you have got a shirt and I haven't got a shirt. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he lifts up his shirt and then rather than hitting the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu which the Prophet Sallallahu is allowing him to do so while he grabs a hold of the Prophet Sallallahu and he starts to kiss him over his stomach the companions are shocked the Prophet Sallallahu is shocked he says, Ya Suwad, what is this? the Messenger the Suwad, he says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu how could I ever take revenge against you? It's just that I know that after this moment, I may die in battle. And the last thing that I want to touch is your skin. Brothers and sisters, this is justice. This is justice. And this is the justice that we have to be able to reenact. We find this with the Messenger of Allah we, should, we know that we love him, we take him as a model. But why is it that we accept injustice? Why is it that we don't do justice ourselves? One time the Messenger of Allah he was with Abu Bakr and he was standing on his left. And Ibn Abbas who was a small boy, the Ibn Abbas he was 13 years old when the Messenger of Allah passed away. So at this moment in time he must have been a, even, he was even younger, a small boy. And he was on the right of him. And he's the Messenger of Allah, he has a glass, he has, he has some water in his hand. And he wants to offer it to Abu Bakr radiallahu an. But he can't do this because he's on his left. The right is with Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. So he says to him, ya, he says to Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, is it okay that I give this water to Abu Bakr? Because he's older than you. Surely you should be willing to give up your right because he's older than you know that he is Abu Bakr, the greatest companion. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, he said, no, I want to take my right. And the reason why he wanted to take this right is because he was trying, he wanted to take, he, wanted, he was looking at the cup of where the Prophet drank from so he could drink from the very same part of that cup. But the point is, brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he was able to execute justice even before battle over a very small issue. He was able to execute justice even with the small, menial, mundane things of our daily lives, even with those people that are invisible to us, the young ones, the children. This was the justice of, Abu, of um, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so just that he even said that there was a woman who stole and Usama ibn Zayd and she, was, she came from a very good family, a very, very noble family. They sent someone who is beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu to maybe try to lighten the punishment. They sent the, the, the one who is one of the most beloved to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi who was Usama ibn Zayd. This was like a son to the Prophet Sallallahu and say they sent Osama bin Zayd and, Osama, and, and the Prophet وسلم, said if this was even my daughter Fatima who he loved more than all of his children and she is one of the people of Ahlul Jannah she said, he said she is the leader of the women of Ahlul Jannah she, he said that if she was to steal then I would have given her the consequences of the punishment that I am, this is how just the messenger of Allah وسلم, was 
on one occasion. And there's many, many examples, brothers and sisters. One example is that of Ali radiallahu anh, he was known for his justice. A man, he stole the shield of Ali radiallahu anh, a man who was a Jew. And then the pro and he was Amir al Mu'mineen at this time. And he basically told the judge at that time, Shuraih, the very famous judge, Shuraih, he said, Judge over, judge over us. And then the, the, this man, he came in front of this judge, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, who's Amir al Mu'mineen, and this Jew who stole the shield of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And he says, I want you to do justice. So Shuraih, he said, Okay, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Tell us how, if you got any witnesses. And he says, yes, I will bring you the best witnesses. The witnesses are who? The grandchildren of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Shuray, he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, we cannot do this. We cannot take witnesses from your own family. Have you got any witnesses? And, the, and Ali radiallahu anh said, no, we don't have, we don't, you don't have any witnesses. So then Shuray, he addressed the Jew. And he says, Ya Fulan. Tell me, have you, to prove to me that this is your shield and this is, you didn't steal it. And then after some judgment, after some time, after he had, the, the, the judge had listened to both people, the leader of the Muslims and a person who was not that well known amongst the Jews. Uh, the the Shuray, he said that, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I've got no choice but to give the shield back to this Jew because you don't have enough proof. This man, this Jew was so shocked by this. This is the leader of the Muslims and there is a judge and he is going against the leader of the Muslims. How is this possible? But not only this, Ali radiallahu anh, he said, Ya Shuray, I agree with your judgment, but I am still upset with you because you didn't do full justice. First of all, first of all, you called me Amir al -Mu'mineen. And in a court of justice, you should never address me with these titles. You have in fact done some injustice. The incredible thing about all of this is that the Jew is witnessing this and he's seeing justice happening in front of his eyes and he is quite shocked by this. And he thinks and he says to himself that I can't believe this. I took the shield from this person and he is the leader of the Muslims and then he brings me in front of a judge and the judge rules against us. What kind of thing is this? I testify that none has the right to be worshipped and that messenger and that Muhammad وسلم, is his final messenger. He became Muslim. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, if we see injust justice like this, then we will be able to spread Islam in the best possible way. You know what happened this morning? We have a, a leader again in this country and he got away with so much. He was lying, he spoke, spoke out against the Muslims, he's Islamophobic, he's racist, all of these things. Why is it that the people still voted for him? Why is this? Because we are used to injustice. We are used to injustice. As oppressed people, it's really important that when we are dealing with injustice, that we have to be just ourselves. You know, you play the ball, you don't play the man. Don't criticize people who are oppressing us because of the way that they look and make nicknames and say bad things about them. But deal with their arguments. Don't backbite them. Don't say silly things about them. Because even if you are on the right side of justice, you will still be held to account. There has to be balance in the pursuit of justice. But one thing, brothers and sisters, what we need to do as Muslims, we are going to be facing a backlash. The laws after laws are going to be passed. A majority is held now in Parliament. Many laws are going to be able to be passed now. And we, ha as a Muslim community, we have to fight back with justice. And we have to do it in a legal way. But the best way of doing this, brothers and sisters, is for us to interact with the society in large. The only thing that these non-Muslims see about Muslims is what they see in the media. They don't know us because we're not interacting with them. And this is a huge shame, brothers and sisters, because they don't know about Islam. And what they see of Islam is what they see in us. And if they see injustice in us, if they see us lying, if they see us cheating, if they see us doing all of these things, 
the more impression are we giving them of Islam. It is a sad reality, brothers and sisters. Maybe we don't want to become ambassadors for Islam, but the fact that we are Muslims, we are automatically become ambassadors. So if we want to make a real change in this country, make a real change in this community, then we have to begin with ourselves. This is what justice is. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims in this country and to, to, to lessen or get rid of, eliminate the Islamophobia that's taking, that's taking place and that may occur as a result of these elections. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring justice all around the world and for us to live only by those things that are pleasing to Allah Jalla wa Allah. Just before I end brothers and sisters, I have some sad news. Straight after the, the Salah, we will be praying the Janazah of Brother Muhammad Akbar. He is a close family friend uh, uh, of my family. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to accept all of his righteous deeds. I, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of his sins. Amen. He was a regular musalli at this masjid. He used to come here regularly. We, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give sabr to his family. And inshallah, brothers and sisters, please stay behind so we can pray all together so that we can ask for his forgiveness. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik shibun la ilahi la ant astaghfiruka wa tubalikwa wa peenu shabbat.